Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Gay from Scratch, and AMD have just open sourced Capsaicin framework. This is their uh, rendering test bed, and you can actually see it in front of you right now. The reason why I'm starting with a hands on demonstration is to answer probably your most immediate question Is this for AMD only? Well, if you look up here, you will see this is actually running on my GeForce RTX 3070 Ti laptop edition. So the answer is no. This also works on uh, NVIDIA machines, NVIDIA GPUs, and Intel. CPUs. Uh, so this is their um, open source framework for developing new features, graphical rendering testing playground. So if you're working on your own game engine or renderer, there's a couple things that you may find of interest in this particular framework. Uh, specifically, two things have been implemented uh, directly here, including uh, other things like uh, model loaders, etc., uh, but we've also got, in this particular release, uh, real-time global illumination, sort of like what you would see with uh, Lumen in Unreal Engine or SDFGI or Sign Distance Field Global Illumination in uh, the Godot game engine. I actually do believe their implementation is also using Sign Distance Field, so it's very much like uh, the Godot's approach. The other thing that they've added in this particular release, so right now we are seeing their global illumination setup, but we can also switch this over to a real-time path tracing. This is uh, the new ray tracing hotness, uh, and as you can see, this scene is now being ray traced, basically using a path tracing algorithm. So this is a testbed environment for checking out new rendering features, as well as, of course, open source implementations of those particular features. So this one is released under the MIT open source license. So far, we have seen Flying World. Again, I'm in path tracing mode right now. Uh, we can switch over from Flying World into Gas Station which is, uh, as you may be able to guess by the name, a gas station. Again, we can switch back to their uh, global illumination, real-time global illumination system as well. Uh, and there we go. So now we're using global illumination instead of path tracing. And as you can see, the real-time global illumination is a much faster uh, and more uh, applicable to modern day hardware. But path tracing is uh, becoming more and more prevalent towards the future. You do have a number of control options over here. You do have um, a variety of different environment maps you could switch into, for example, in the background there. Uh, you can turn on temporal anti-aliasing. You can use res uh, resampling. You can have tone mapping or no tone mapping. You can control the exposure and the gamma. And then down here under render options, uh, you've got a number of different settings you can play with. So if you don't want environmental lighting, you can turn that off. Uh, you could disable uh, textures, um, the uh, Elbit Oak texture channel, and so on. So you've got a number of different controls and features with it in this viewer app itself. But the heart of this framework is actually the code behind it. So let's go jump in and take a look at, uh, well, well, we'll come back to the code in just a second. So we're going to focus instead on the release itself first. Uh, this is a C++ project. One of the nice things about it being a C++ project is it actually worked out of the box. I didn't really have to do anything special. I'll, t I'll tell you how to get it and get up and running with it in just a minute. So they're releasing it. This is based based around Direct3D 12 uh, for research, so this is not a Vulkan project. Uh, the um, capsaicin, which by the way, that's the uh, spicy stuff in chili peppers, if you're wondering. So when your mouth burns after eating something too hot, uh, blame the capsaicin. So it also makes you happy. So those are the two things about capsaicin that you learned in this video. Uh, it is their internal research project for real-time graphics, uh, which they've been used to develop and test new and upcoming rendering algorithms. Uh, first of all is their new real-time global illumination system, GI 1.0, that is also being released as part of this announcement. So here you can see global illumination off, on, off, on. So if you're looking for a real-time lighting solution, again, this is similar to what Lumen or uh, SDFGI are. That is what their implementation is all about. So it's a new uh, rendering research framework, which is easy, flexible, and designed for fast prototyping and development of real-time rendering research. It is built around the simple abstraction over complex low-level hardware implementation details to allow developers to focus on writing algorithms instead of dealing with complex APIs. If you've worked with Vulkan, you know what that part's all about. Although so obviously this is built over Direct 3D 12. Uh, the framework makes efforts to ensure these abstractions are performant, but the priority is rapid developer iteration and debugging. So the uh, Capsaicin framework is therefore not intended to be a high performance product development tool. So this is meant as a research and proof of concept type tool. Uh, so a key concept within it is the ability to support multiple different research implementations and multiple concurrent developers independently working within the code base. So you could have some guy working on global illumination while this guy over here is working on path tracing while that guy over there is working on a portal system, for example. So to enable this, the framework uses a modular design that allows for different components to be independently developed and then combined, reused in different ways. The flexibility allows us to quickly iterate over various rendering pipelines, uh, which was the key to the development of the Global Illumination 1.0 
algorithm. So out of the box framework includes many uh, useful HLSL. Um, that's the high level shader language. That's the DirectX 3D's built in equivalent to GLSL. Uh, functions for material sampling and evaluation, common math functions, light sampling and evaluation, sphe um, spherical harmonics, random number generation, and more. Each of these can be used to quickly create new rendering algorithms and techniques. Speaking of techniques, framework also exposes pre-built techniques that can be mixed and matched as needed to create new render chains. Some of the stock components include visibility, buffer generation, temporal anti-aliasing, screen space, global illumination, uh, light sampling, ray traced acceleration, structure building, tone mapping, GLTF scene loading, and more. In a lot of ways, you can actually look at this as like the kernel of a game engine. So if you actually wanted to start doing your own research project, this could be a good code base to build upon. Uh, we got some more details about their um, global illumination, their real-time system here. Um, so the technique takes advantage of hardware accelerated ray tracing in modern GPUs, but intelligently uses additional lighting structures to reduce the number of required rays and enable evaluation of indirect lighting uh, entirely at runtime on current hardware. Uh, the technique is what we use to estimate indirect lighting in real time within the framework. It is based on a two-level radiance caching structure that allows you to reduce the sampling rate for increased performance while making the most of every ray through better sampling efficiency. There is a GDC paper on the uh, global illumination algorithm. Again, you can see an example of it in action right here. Uh, we've also got the path tracer. Uh, details of it there. Again, I think path tracing is more about next generation hardware, to be honest. Uh, here you can see uh, the home page or the landing page for the framework itself. This is on GitHub. We'll get back to that in a second. Got another link to the paper behind it. Uh, an, a rundown of the features of this particular example. Again, the paper is available. And then we got a couple more comparisons of it on, off, on, off, etc. Again, with GI, without GI, with GI, without GI. And uh, then uh, this requires a Direct3D 12 and DXR 1.1 compatible uh, video card, a pretty current version of Windows 10 or higher, uh, Visual Studio 2019 or higher, and CMake 3.10 or higher. And by the way, you're also going to need to have the current version of the Windows SDK, the uh, C++ build tool chain, et cetera, for Visual Studio. So it is an open source project. It is available up on GitHub. I will have the link in the linked article down below. Um, You've got, again, it's MIT source licensed, which is a very liberal license in terms of what it allows you to do. Um, yeah, so if you want to go ahead and check this guy out, again, there are some prerequisites on the technical side. Your hardware needs to be good enough. Uh, you need to have CMake 310. Uh, also, you're going to need to have uh, the Windows SDK. So that one, make sure that you've installed that guy. That's going to be a tripping point. And of course, you need to have the C++ tools for Visual Studio installed. To run this guy, just clone the repository down like that. Do make sure you have the recursed sub-modules in there because a lot of this project is actually implemented as sub-modules. Although, if you do screw that up, you can just run this command after the fact and it will grab them for you. And then you load up CMake. You get it to build you a Visual Studio project. And then Bob's your uncle. Here is the Visual Studio project. So what you're going to notice here coming into the project I'll zoom this in during the edit so you can see here it's going to the source files here you got the core of it right here but you're going to notice each technique is actually actually implemented as its own project within so here your path tracing is isolated from your global illumination 10 uh, your atmosphere rendering here your skybox rendering here your screen space global illumination is in here etc so they're all separate um, pieces so they can be worked on separately. This is the modular nature, um, nature of the um, capsaicin framework that they were talking about there. So you just go ahead, build it and run it. The key project that you want to go run if you just want to play around with it is this guy. So set the scene viewer as your active project and then build and run this guy. And that's what we saw in action earlier on. So ladies and gentlemen, that is the open source AMD capsaicin framework. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.